We all know that two plus two equals four. We know this so well that if I came up and told you it was actually five, you would think he's crazy. What would it take to convince you otherwise? Perhaps a renowned physicist could create a mathematical analysis that proves two plus two equals five. If such an analysis were created, then broadcast by major news sources, you may begin to question your own sense of what's true. You may begin to feel like the crazy one. In psychology, this is a phenomenon known as gaslighting. The American Psychological Association defines gaslighting as manipulation so severe, it makes one question their own experiences and understanding of reality. While this term is most popular in pop psychology, I argue that we are currently living in an era of gaslighting science. Whether it is climate change denial, allegations of mass voter fraud, or COVID skepticism, the presence of pseudoscience and irrational beliefs are evident and actively lead to unnecessary suffering and death. In order to combat the further spread of pseudoscience and distrust of science in this country, it's important to learn about its historical roots. We need to educate ourselves about how it impacts us personally on a worldwide scale. And finally, we need to learn for ourselves the true nature of scientific thought. While several industries have played their hands in public manipulation, such as cigarette companies fighting Surgeon General's warnings, today let's highlight Exxon and the larger stakes of unchecked climate change. Exxon actually funded several studies indicating a relationship between climate change and our widespread burning of coal, oil, and gas. This, these studies were obviously threats to their existence as a company and industry, so once they saw the scientific consensus piling up, they began to take action. The company's goal was not to disprove their own findings, rather to discredit scientific information. Exxon CEO at the time, Lee Raymond, said at the 1997 World Petroleum Congress, the case for so-called global warming is far from airtight. There's a lot we really don't know about how climate will change in the 21st century and beyond. So before we make choices about global climate policies, we need an open debate on the science, an analysis of the risks, and a careful consideration of the costs and benefits. He then publicized this misinformation even to politicians, suggesting there was no consensus among researchers. Meanwhile, a majority of the studies his own company funded from 1977 through 2014 lined up with the rest of the research that fossil fuels did contribute to climate change. This statement was false. Raymond knew it, and so did the politicians funded by his lobbyists. The tactics used by Exxon and other fossil fuel giants have been devastating. The combination of their public statements and financial endorsements of politicians add up to over $5 billion since the year 2000 and have decreased public belief in climate change. A 2016 Pew Research poll found that only 48% of the U.S. population believes climate change is due to our own actions. The fossil fuel industry successfully used their money to mislead the public, us, in order to maintain their own profits while continuing to destroy the environment right under our noses. There is some light at the end of the tunnel. A 2020 Pew poll found that now roughly two thirds of us in the US see climate change as a major issue and want the federal government to do more to address it. The difficulty is scientists estimate that the cost for damages of climate change could be in the magnitude of trillions of dollars. Not to mention the amount of lives lost due to heat waves, rising sea levels or forest fires ravaging California. It would also require switching completely to renewable energy sources as soon as possible. However, passing crucial legislation through Congress at this point seems unlikely. Due to fossil fuel companies' continued use of misinformation and lobby money with politicians, we continue to be divided on the facts. The dangers of science denial have become especially clear in the midst of the pandemic. A 30-year-old Texas man attended a COVID party and said to his nurse, I think I made a mistake. I thought this was a hoax, but it's not. He died days later. The fact is we in the United States have the greatest number of confirmed COVID cases in the world, even over countries with three times our population. This is no coincidence. The constant efforts to gaslight science consciously used by corporations and political leaders have made truth something that can be changed. And we now face nearly 510,000 dead Americans, a number that rises as I speak to you today. There's perhaps no better example of the dangers of misinformation than the attack on our Capitol on January 6th this year. You've all seen plenty of images and videos of the group of several thousand breaking into our highest political building in an attempt to change the results of our election. Here's just one. These individuals were moved to violence by conspiracy theories, 
fictions of voter fraud, and ideas that simply are not true. Okay, how do we fix this? At the root of the issue is we do not have a firm grasp on the basics of science, and so have been led to distrust its findings. The astronomer, the late Carl Sagan, has said, science is more than just a body of knowledge, it is a way of thinking. At its core, science is a way we can discover the truth through skepticism. One major feature of scientific analysis is that it is self-correcting, and we saw this feature at the beginning of the pandemic. While it may have looked as if scientists were constantly changing their minds, whether to wear a mask or not, or how serious is COVID-19 anyway, in reality, their minds had not been made up. A consensus had not been agreed upon yet. This is the cutting edge of science, the point of the scientific process. Each piece of information were from individual studies, that data would be used in combination with all the rest and discussed among other researchers in order to create better explanations. Nowadays, scientists agree about the severity of COVID-19, but only after those original studies were peer reviewed and analyzed by multiple different independent researchers can we really say scientists have made up their minds. In the case of climate change, their minds are made up. Currently, 18 scientific associations agree that climate change is caused by our own behaviors and habits. While in science, skepticism and questioning are always welcome, it would require truly groundbreaking evidence to uproot the existing conclusions formed from decades of research. The best part is, we can use science in our daily lives. From conspiracy theories to astrology, alternative medicines, or even ghosts, we can be skeptics about what we witness or believe. We can educate ourselves about our own biases, such as searching for information that confirms our opinions. What we need to do is compare our experiences with others and brainstorm the many possible explanations for what occurs in our world instead of accepting the first one that comes to mind. And most importantly, we can learn to be patient, realizing that science is not as easy as we would like. It is a grueling process of testing, retesting, and peer review that takes time, miscalculations, and corrections. But after all that, its conclusions can be trusted. We must accept that science's findings are not immediate, not stumbled upon by chance, and not accepted on a whim. And we owe it to ourselves as human beings. What we saw on January 6th was only a glimpse of what we may yet become. Yet we are still capable of such magnitudes of love, compassion, creativity, and ingenuity. We don't discuss smallpox today, even though it killed billions. We wiped it out in the 80s. We've saved billions more through modern medicine, vaccines, sophisticated surgeries, and medications of all kinds. The progress we have made through science is astounding, and we can look out to a limitless future, but we need to start now. We are at a turning point for the human race. We face either all of the possibilities of science or a new dark age of superstition and suffering as with COVID. This disease is strangling the US. We've seen some of what climate change can do. The full force is just on the horizon. Yet we can't even agree that two plus two equals four. <laughs>